just not knowing what's going on, or like you said, they read and all that stuff. And then there's, there's no organization. They are very much connected to each other. You don't have organization can be how you deliver your information. In terms of the challenges or limitations, first of all, I would find students to be quite, I would fear that students would depend on you and say, but miss, how do I do this? Where do I go like this? Who can I go and ask? But that should be, you know, your option. Um, students may not see practical applicability. Why are we doing this? But what they always understood that so getting a very objective and wide and open way of exploring easy um, the accessibility of objective information in Malaysia we thought about word of mouth I have to cover myself because I can do it we thought about word of mouth we thought about um, finding out you may not find as many studies on it as many research based so getting something that Okay, because it's more related to them. Because the uh, brief is more maybe for the parents, right? For the households. Kedai yet also, I don't think students are really interested in buying groceries as much, right? They're interested in the budget, fund and expenses of the government. Because that relates back to what the government is going to provide services to them. Not so much in the revenue, because they're not paying tax yet, right? Okay, so their concern is mainly of this. Okay, so that's why we focus on this topic. And then uh, the objective of this PBL is to uh, make sure that the student have understanding on government expenses, fund and budget, as well as understanding on the needs of the financial aids and also all the government services. Okay? And then, uh, so the... 90 percent is more on summative, so more on the reports that they provide, and also 10 percent on the formative, the quality of the reports, as well as the participation in class. Okay? Uh, some para uh, more <laughs> our our graphics graph is a bit uh, messy in a way because content so examples are like the exactly summary, the introduction of the report, the benefits and weaknesses of the brief. So that is on the content of the report. So we would uh, grade them based on whether all the requirements have been fulfilled, most requirements fulfilled, minor requirements, maybe one or two requirements fulfilled, or there's none, uh, no requirements fulfilled. And then we also look at the conclusions and the flow of the discussion, okay, as well as the participation in terms of when they come and ask me, uh, you know, uh, the progress of you know, <laughs> the anatomy and physiology of the sex organs, okay, the testes and the ovaries. So the hormones that we need to specify for the birth control here will be the female hormones, not the male hormones. So it's the estrogen and progesterone. So it's related related to the cycles. It's called menstrual and the ovarian cycles. And last, of, last and not least, of course, it's more relevant to the topic, is the contraceptive methods. So we try not to pull the students away from the topics that we want to, uh, want them to focus. So the main topic that we want them to is the contraceptive pills. So these are the questions that we show that link that can um, bring the students more to two of the major elements to be assessed. So there will be the organizations of the notes, of the, present, uh, the informations, and also from the public presentations. So the ranking will be 0 to 5, from the poorest until the excellent level. <laughs> Only theory, uh, no, no hands-on experiments have been conducted. So... Alright, so, okay, so I think you already got a lot of things I can see that you're already able to fulfill the criteria to become a good PBL designer eh? All right, in your classroom. I really hope that you tomorrow when you go, not tomorrow, but tomorrow Saturday, eh? All right. Okay, on Monday when you go, okay, back to your office, okay, when you start to uh, think about assignment, maybe PBL become one of your choice. Alright? So there's a few tips that I would like to give okay before I end this class because things is very important, eh? Alright, not the exam tips, okay? Mm -hmm. Just a tips on how you are going to do the project based learning. Okay, the first and foremost is make a tough topic fun. Alright, that is very important. Alright, this is the tips, eh? Make a tough topic fun. Okay, although you feel that it's a very tough topic, but at least there must be a fun element. 
Because as you can see that you can engage the students in the learning process more effectively when you have a fun element in it. So learning must be fun. Okay, that is the first important thing. And for sure, you have to focus on the standards. Standards is very important. Okay, which, where, where is the standards? Where we can find the standards? Basically, you can look at the uh, learning outcome and your program outcomes. Okay? And start small when you are new. Okay, some of you are just going to start PBL in your classroom. So start small. All right? Maybe you're not giving them a full uh, assignment eh? just for 14 weeks assignment. Maybe you can start with 3 weeks assignment or 4 weeks assignment first. Just a small topic first. Then you experiment the thing. It's a trial and error. Okay? And you will learn a lot of things from your mistakes. Then after that you can improve it. Alright? Then test write the final product before starting the project. So you yourself must actually involve in this BBL before you start the project. Because you have you can anticipate the problems, the challenges. That is why the third element that I ask you all to do is the challenges and the limitations. So you already you're already able to visualize, okay, or already imagine, already can anticipate what are the challenges and limitations. So when there is a real problem, you are able to overcome it. So easily you can overcome it. Alright? Alright. Then uh, start your project with an entry event. Okay, that is very important. So what is the entry event here means? Something that is actually bringing the students into the, close to the real life. Alright, like for example, MH370. Uh, that is the, the reason thing, isn't it? So maybe you can bring that students into that. And GST for an example. Alright, and uh, BBIM. Okay, uh, so these are the few things that can bring the students into the PBR. Keep students in the loop. This is very important because that's why I can say that uh, robots group you have like uh, out of the topic because basically you shouldn't do out of topic at all rubric. If you are a very good facilitator, so the student won't go out of the topic at all. Okay, that is very important thing. Then set clear deadlines. Okay, that is very important also. Eh? So that the student knows what to do, okay, how to actually manage the time properly in order to okay, finish the project or problem okay and get the solutions create a balanced assessment plan that is very important okay because as you can see there are a few elements that you already set up okay and it must be have a, quite a good balance in terms of the report and also the presentation also all right so it won't be like report will have like 70 percent then uh, only 10 percent for the presentation Okay, it must have some not 50-50, but at least you must know what where is the weightage must go to. Okay, even in the report also, the intro okay, maybe five percent, but the content must be more than intro, isn't it? Because you cannot have the same marks for intro and the content. Okay, five five cannot. Okay, so you must know eh, where you have to put more strength or more effort, you give more marks. Alright, and complete the projects with a bang. Okay, just like uh, the baby's project. Eh? Alright, uh, so this is a very good bank eh, for the students. Alright, so for better implementation, it is important for you to know the topic. So where is the, in this case, choice is a very, very critical. The type of topic that you choose is very, very important. Okay, then facilitating teams to success, it is very important. You have to facilitate your teams. You must become a good facilitator in order to run a good PBR. Right? And don't worry, eh? for the first time, for sure you might actually fall down for a while, eh? then you can come back. Okay? There will be a lot of problems okay, in implementing it. But okay, that's why I say you must start small. Then you learn, learn, learn and make it grow. Okay? And relationships matter. It's what relationships here is between students and you. Alright? That is very important. And okay. It's very important thing is that know is the goal before you go. You must know the objective that you're going to achieve. Right? What is the purpose of my PBM? You know, it's not just for the sake of I'm going to create a le new learning method in my classroom. I'm going to implement this my PBM. Okay? It is not going to achieve anything. So know your goal before you go. So finally, I'd like to conclude with a few quotes eh, about PBL. Eh? Uh, Study shows that problem, project-based learning, okay, even problem-based learning, 
can increase the retention of content and improve students' attitude towards learning. All right? Because as you can see, if you look at my second slide, eh, on the learning pyramid, 90% eh, of what you learn, you still, still can remember and understand when they do by themselves. It is not true lecture. It is not true something. Someone who is actually school feeding you on how to do anything. Okay, when the students okay, self learn, okay, they can do it. And project based learning increases long term retention, improves problem solving and collaboration skills, and improves students' attitude towards learning. PBL can do that, basically. At the same time, they can improve the students' high order thinking skills. Because if you can implement or bring in creativity, and critical thinking in your PPL, it can bring up students to achieve more than that. All right, so this is the quote from Stephen Hart. Okay, this formal activity, okay? education just okay, show you like uh, to the zoo and uh, okay, informal okay, learning is just like what you are going to do in PPL, it's like walk okay, uh, through the savanna. Okay, so with that, I would like to. Uh, thank all of you for your participation, for your attention through all the days, okay, for two days and eh, here together. And I really hope that, okay, uh, you all will implement this PBL and bring on this all the knowledge and skills back to your classroom. Okay, with that, thanks a lot and all the rest. Okay, I came here uh, with a very uh, high expectation of. Uh, what to what problem solving skills are all about and uh, I discovered project based learning today and I feel that it's very very useful to my class management the way I conduct my classes and uh, I feel that it is a very very uh, useful tool to actually try it out in my class so um, going away today with this knowledge I feel that I have learned a lot and um, also, I am now convinced that it is very, very uh, relevant for teamwork, actually, uh, team projects. Rolling, action. Okay, I feel good attending this course, this course especially because uh, it really taught me on how to come up with the problem solving or project based okay, solving uh, techniques and they teach us on assessment, how do we do assessment, okay? So this is really useful where I'm going to use it for the next trimester as well, where I can use it to conduct uh, more assessment, especially on assignments, uh, presentations to my students. So it's a really good program and I hope most to, uh, more lecturers will join this course so that it will be a great fun, okay, learning all this uh, problem-based uh, learning. Thank you. Hello, my name is Nicole. I'm the assistant lecturer from CFSPJ. So I have just attended two days training that's called Project-Oriented Problem-Based Learning in Classroom, which is conducted by Dr. Bala. So at first, I was extracted by this title, so I, I have registered myself for this training. And for the first day, it all comes in my mind with a lot of question marks because with the theories that have been exposed, uh, it's quite new, ex uh, explained by Dr. Bala. One, but when after but Dr. Bala have, has conducted some uh, what we call group discussions and some uh, hands-on uh, designing uh, or layout, we I, I get to use I have get myself much comfortable with this uh, training as I know how to implement the problem-based learning in the classroom with this. New teaching methodology, I believe that I can implement well another fun and interesting uh, learning environment with my students in the coming semester. So uh, by, the, by, this end, by the end of this training, I feel it's very useful for those, uh, all the lecturers, especially those who are still new with, uh, still new or exploring themselves with the teaching methodologies, you are welcome to this training because from here you know, you get an overall idea how to design, how to explore yourself more with the latest technology met uh, teaching methods to expose to the students so that the students can have more fun in their learning. That's all for me. Okay, hello. So my name is uh, Fernando. I am an architecture lecturer from DSD, FPS. And uh, we just finished uh, a program on uh, project-based learning and um, problem-based learning. 
Uh, it was a very interesting course or program that we, we had good fun and also learned a lot of interesting things. Uh, like for instance how to make assignments that will be more valuable to our students to make them more able to deal with real situations when they go back to the industry. So uh, I think this is quite exciting to create this kind of assignments and it will make the students more engaged in, the, in their work uh, and realize also the, what is the practical application of what they are learning in university that it's not just abstract thinking but also has a practical aspect to it so uh, so I'm excited to go back and uh, and see how the students will react to this kind of, uh, of assignments and this kind of teaching methodology that I think will be very useful for uh, especially for architecture but of course for all subjects but um, for my subject I think it will be very useful